Welcome back to Virginia This Morning. You know, we end up talking a lot about loss in the news, and our next guest is here to talk about recovering from loss. That's right. He has uh, helped children across the community cope with tragedy, and he's performed his one-man show, The Neon Man and Me, across the country. We want to welcome Slash Coleman. Come on Slash, in. come on. Great to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, yeah. All right. right. Welcome. All right, tell us about this one-man show, the award-winning one-man show, right? Exactly. Three years ago, my best friend died. He was a neon glass blower from Roanoke, Virginia. He was blown into a power line after while he was hanging a neon sign. A month after he died, his girlfriend found out she was pregnant. Oh. Um, so in my effort to create a care package for his son, I ended up writing this one-man show. Um, nine stories about friendship, four songs I play on my guitar, and I set off three years ago. And now it's my full-time job. It went off Broadway in April. Um, I've toured the country really? twice. Yeah. Wow. We're Is looking it? at take to take it on Broadway next year. How about um, that? And PBS will be filming it January 23rd in their studios. Free. Um, free public performance for all Richmonders. Wow. And Slash, do you find that when you travel the country and, and across Virginia, there are so many people that can identify because we've all lost mm -hmm. at one time or another? I think so. I mean, I've hit some universal themes about friendship. I mean, I'm told after, um, after my show that people call up their, their parents or their best friends and say, you know what, I really don't, I'm not, I don't want to take you for granted because mm -hmm. your friendship means a lot to me. That's the best gift? Yeah, it's really nice. Was this what you always wanted to do with your life and you just didn't know which road you would take until you experienced your tragedy or did it just kind of come out of what you were experiencing? Um, this, it kind of came out of what I was experiencing. I mean, I went to grad school for writing and, and jazz piano, so I've always been in the arts. But, you know, when my friend died, all my chops were up to par, so I just took it from there. I received kind of my calling, yeah. I think, um, and just, you know, showed up. And what was um, your friend's uh, girlfriend, you said, or wife? Uh, girlfriend, what yeah. Was the, what was the, the girlfriend's uh, reaction to, mm -hmm. the, to the production? Um, you know, the family, his, the members of, of his church and, um, and her, they, they really felt like I brought um, Mark back to life. Right. And, and they've seen it since then a, a lot of times. Um, and they say the same thing, that they feel like I'm, I'm bringing my friend back to life. Oh, every show, I'm sure. Yeah, right, right. So. That's an amazing gift. Right there. Yeah. 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 And how long um, did you have to uh, go through some trying times yourself in writing this production? Slash? Yeah, the, the cathartic part for me was in the, in the writing of the show. Um, for about a year and a quarter I spent you know, just writing down my memories of him. It ended up being about 300 pages. Wow. And when I, got, when I decided I wanted to put into a show and take it on the road, I had to take the 300, those 300 pages and shape it into a 30-page, 60-minute show. Um, so there was a lot of catharsis in that. It was spent, you know, crying and writing, mm -hmm. you know, every morning from like 4:30 to 9, um, I, and then, you know, for that year and a quarter, then I'd go to my day job. And um, so the the nice thing about it for me is in the performance, people say, oh, you know, isn't it hard to perform? But it's really not. Um, you know, I'm surrounded by people, and um, you know. Uh, the, the part where I felt most alone was in the writing. So mm -hmm. the, the, the reward is, you know, performing it for people and f seeing how it makes them feel. And how have you used this to help other, you've helped nonprofits? Yeah, so I've raised over $30,000 for nonprofits with the show. I offer the show as a fundraiser for people in the community. I say, instead of selling candy bars, sell tickets to the show, you know, and you can, you can take a large portion of the money. Um, and that's really how the show kind of took off. I say that invisible door opens after every time I do a show. And one of those invisible doors that opened was the Virginia Commission for the Arts gave me funding to create a curriculum um, for kids called Healing Communities, helping students come to terms with tragedy, loss, and violence. Right. So I basically go into schools now and help students do what I did, take a tragic event, write about it, and then perform it in front of you know, their peers and their community. Oh, Slash, it's, it's such a pleasure meeting you, my yeah, friend. Yeah, Congratulations. Thanks, and thanks a lot. Wonderful. Good luck with it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Well, still to come, think raking leaves is a pain. <laughs> think again. We'll show you how to recycle those leaves and get your lawn looking great next. Well, speaking of the great outdoors, let's get outside with Mark Viet in his garden. He's got more tips on how to get that garden looking good this fall.